Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome. Did I ever tell you that my very, very first lunchbox was one of those tin lunchboxes and it was welcome back, Kata. And it was. I, I Welcome back. Welcome back. They even made a song after that. Yes, they did. Anyway, I don't know. Y'all don't I'm know. I'm Tommy. She's I'm Mel. Mel. And we're going to go back on this uh, John O'Keefe, Karen Reed trial. But yes. we're going to talk about these 3D renderings that I've been literally holding out on Mel for. Um, <laughs> Until after the trial is over uh, and it's over now. The lady that we're going to talk about, her name is Amber. Uh, she's coming up or trying to come up with these 3D renderings. Uh, she's done them on the, we talked about it last time, on uh, submarine explosion, the Apple stabbings mm -hmm. the, the apple river stabbings uh, uh the murdoch yes trial. the nashville shooting which is right around the corner here yeah. 30 minutes away uh but she's done some renderings and she's still doing more mm -hmm. but these renderings are of the prosecution's opening statements with uh uh jenna mccabe mm -hmm. and, jen uh, mccabe whatever <laughs> 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 Jen McCabe, you know, we're yeah. just going to call you Trish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her new name is Bob. <laughs> yeah, we're going to call you hey, Jack. Uh, look, I'm just done talking. I'm going to bring this up, and we're just going to go with it. There's four of them. They're about anywhere between a minute and a half to two minutes long. They're not long, and we're just going to talk about it. Sounds good to me. Uh, the time is around 12.30 a.m., and Karen Reed sits in her car approximately 60 feet past the home where John O'Keefe's body was found. This is based on the prosecutor's opening statements that Karen Reed's vehicle traveled 60 feet in reverse at 24 miles an hour when hitting John O'Keefe. Karen leaves and drives back to O'Keefe's house, where she goes to bed for the night. Supporters of Karen Reed question these events. One thing is, it's reported his cell phone was found under his body instead of being thrown in a different direction. Other things that don't make sense is how someone being so far down the road would stop, back up quickly with the intent of hitting someone, and then that person would just stand there and not get out of the way. For me, one of the biggest questions is how it is possible that no one witnessed this. This wasn't some quiet night and everybody was in bed. There was nearly a dozen people in the home having a party. That's why Karen and John were there in the first place. Jennifer McCabe testified that she could see Karen Reed's car out front the door and that she was texting O'Keefe to park behind her car. Viewing this from another direction, you can see how Brian Higgins' Jeep is parked right in front of the mailbox. And as we move in and view this from the driveway, it seems unlikely that 12 people would leave the house and not have been able to see a body in the front yard. Also, this was a night that it was snowing and I wonder how Karen was able to accelerate so quickly without just spinning tires and warning O'Keefe of the impending danger. It Can just we see hit. it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Why I not? would like to see it again. From the beginning or? Y yeah. Gonna start the time is night. around 12.30 a.m., and Karen Reed sits in her car approximately 60 feet past the home where John O'Keefe's body was found. If you this need me to pause it, let me know. This is based on the prosecutor's opening statements that Karen Reed's vehicle traveled 60 feet in reverse at 24 miles an hour when hitting John O'Keefe. Karen leaves and drives back to O'Keefe's house, where she goes to bed for the night. Supporters of Karen Reed question these events. One thing is, it's reported his cell phone was found under his body instead of being thrown in a different direction. Right. Other things that don't make sense is how someone being so far down the road would stop, back up quickly with the intent of hitting someone, and then that person would just stand there and not get out of the way. Mm -hmm. 60 feet. <laughs> For me, one of the biggest questions is how it is possible that no one witnessed this. It's... This wasn't some quiet night and everybody was in bed. There was nearly a dozen people in the home having a party. Well, then they wouldn't have heard anything. That's why Karen and John were there in the first place. Mm -hmm. Jennifer McCabe testified that she could see Karen Reed's car out front the door and that she was texting O'Keefe to park behind her car. Viewing this from another direction, you can see how Brian Higgins' Jeep is parked right in front of the mailbox. Mm -hmm. And as we move in and view this from the driveway, it seems unlikely that 12 people would leave the house and not have been able to see a body in the front yard. Right. Oh. Also, this was a night that it was snowing, 
And I wonder how Karen was able to accelerate so quickly without just spinning tires and warning O'Keefe of the impending danger. Because it hadn't been plowed yet. Thank you for watching. Okay. You can Okay. Yeah, that changed a lot for me because it hadn't been plowed yet. 60 feet's a pretty good this heads is a up. Three it's a it's a pretty good heads up for her to say, hmm. I mean, he's a cop too. It's not like he would just stand there and say, Oh. This car is coming backwards at 24 miles an hour in a blizzard on snow, right directly in my direction. That, Let me just stand you here. You would definitely hear it. I mean, I lived up in New York for four and a half years, almost five, and it just does nothing up at Fort Drum but snow. So like you you're gonna definitely stand there. hear it <laughs> at 60 gonna... feet. You, aren't you? That gonna, don't make I, no sense. Hey, here's the thing: if I get out of a car, I'm usually looking at the person as they drive down the road. To make sure that they get out all right, or mm -hmm. I'm already walking into the house. <laughs> I'm not gonna stand there and be like, stand out there. Oh shoot, she's backing up in Let a me blizzard. Stand in the road. He no, ain't got I'm no jacket move, on. I'm gonna move back. He's got a hoodie, yeah, right? He just has that hoodie. Like he's gonna stand outside in a blizzard. Gotcha, coach. <laughs> all right, this is part two. <laughs> okay, and you can see the dates that she made the renderings on. Okay. So All let's right. make her big. Make her big. Yeah, that's what he said. That's, oh, God. <laughs> this is oh. the home where the Karen Reed incident took place. Karen stated in her interviews that after arriving at 1224 a.m., John got out of her vehicle and was going into the home to check things out. Walking up the driveway, he approached the door nearest to the garage. After entering the home, you realize it would be impossible to walk through to the basement and not be seen. Mm -hmm. Jennifer McCabe testified that she and others were sitting at the kitchen table and that periodically was getting up and going to the front door. Here's an illustration of what you might see from the front door if John's body was there at this time. Direct line of sight. Continuing, we approach the stairs leading to the basement. This leads to the weight room where the defense believes John O'Keefe was attacked. It would make sense for the gash on the back of his head. Yeah. It's assumed that they used this door, which leads to the backyard, to remove John's body from the basement. You want me to pause it? No. Oh, okay. To outside, where no one upstairs would be able to see. They then would continue to the side of the house, through the gate, which leads to the side of the house with the flagpole. Hmm. No, thank you. Uh, so look at this hand. There's something oddly <laughs> weird about this hand. And I just noticed it and it was tripped me out. And I thought it you were going like to say something. Like, it looks like I, I just recently watched the kingdom of the planet of the apes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. So I'm sorry. I love the Listen. rendering of this because you get to see inside the house and she's not saying this is what happened. She's going off of what testimonies have come out or what has been said. We're idiots. I like it. What did you what did you like about this one? Did you see anything out of this one that was um, interesting? Probably not. I did no, I did. The line of sight. If you're looking out that's, the front that's door, that's huge. Yeah, if you're looking out the front door, she would see his body in the snow. Yeah. I Even totally with that with blizzard, because it's a he was wearing dark clothing and on white. The last time I checked, even blue jeans on white snow stands out. I agree. Sorry, I'm speeding this all up. That's all right. That's all right. There we go. Authorities believe John O'Keefe was hit by Karen Reed's car. It caused him to be thrown through the air, tumbling in such a way that when he hit the ground. He hit his head, causing serious injury. They showed some evidence of a broken taillight and some personal items of John's found at the scene. Looking a at a model to illustrate the injuries, we heard in testimony that John the sustained martini injuries glass. to his arm, the eyes, and the back of his head. Let's look at the injuries to the arm. As a vehicle backs into John, we can see how the taillight would strike the side of his arm, breaking into sharp pieces and cutting him. Moving to this dent indicated in red, it's believed that this is where the glass John was holding hit the vehicle and shattered. 
Hmm. Here's a photo of the prosecution's belief that this dent represents where the glass had hit the vehicle. No. Continuing with the prosecution's theory, John is hit and thrown into the air. When he comes back down, he strikes the back of his head, causing serious injury. This type then, of head injury will cause black eyes, commonly referred to as raccoon eyes. All of this seems possible, but there's a lot of missing things that don't make sense. For instance, the lack of injuries being shown here in red. Mm. You would expect to see many injuries, some on the hips, the elbows, the shoulders, and the rib cage. Especially if your ribs and arm were hit with such force yeah. that you were knocked out of your shoes and thrown 20 feet to the ground. Can you back that but up just a minute? Just what is just like what the biomechanic said. Mm. How, Can you uh, rewind it? Just a, just rewind it a few seconds. Okay, okay. Look, I'll just go right here. Okay. And we'll just go. Continuing with the prosecution's theory, John is hit and thrown into the air. When he comes back down, he strikes the back of his head, causing serious injury. That's a pirouette in the air. This type of head injury will cause black eyes, commonly referred to as raccoon eyes. All of this seems possible, but there's a lot of missing things that don't make sense. For instance, the lack of injuries being shown here in red. You would expect to see many injuries, some on the hips, the elbows, the shoulders, and the rib cage. Especially if your ribs Pause and it. arm were hit with such force. Okay. So you see, there's no way, like if you went back half a second. I'm going to go. I get what you were asking about. So no. right here. Yeah. And then Let's, I wish I could. Uh, there you used can to be slow, a way it to slow it down. Yeah. Go to your, go to that. Um, yeah. Playback speed. There it is. Uh, there. Yeah. I, I know this is going to be really slow. Especially... And stop. Okay, perfect. There's no way if you're hit, how is there no bruising anywhere? No bruising on his body. That's impossible. 24 miles an hour, hard enough to throw your body and spin it in the air and you slide 30 feet. Throw your body 30 feet. There's no way. He would also, I love this, this 3D rendering. So you see how the arm right here is still exposed. He would have had to have been like bending over, like to take the brunt force. Like if he was doing a tackle or a block. Right. But look at. I mean, the reason why he would probably bend forward is if you look at the back angle of the SUV, it's kind of like in a curve. So if he's getting hit, remember what that expert said. It's where the mass of the body is usually at the belly button. So if he's getting hit at the belly button, it's going to propel the upper half of his body yeah. forward. Not... I'm just trying to see how... And if he's that way, how would it... I just can't see how it would physically work. Okay. Now you can put it back at normal speed. Thanks, buddy. All right, pal. Oh, I keep trying to click the day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it back to normal. So I'm looking at what we're seeing and then not uh -huh. looking at the computer that actually has all the stuff that we actually need. <laughs> if your ribs and arm were hit with such force that you were knocked out yeah, of your shoes and 20 feet too. to the ground. Mm-hmm. It's also the lack of evidence on the clothing. There's no abrasions, scrapes, tears, or stains that would indicate sliding on the ground. He wouldn't stand I outside. Question that a glass in one's hand could cause this pattern of dents and chipped paint. It wouldn't. After all, Look. the hand surrounds the glass like a layer of padding, and the speed is no more than tossing a softball. Hold on. <laughs> What'd Look you say? At... You see this? That's yeah. rust. And if this was but taken... This is a day... brand spanking new car, though. But I'm saying, like... This dent and this being caused by a martini little glass, small martini glass. I don't that's see that. rust that's been there for a minute. But they that's what I'm telling you is they didn't it wasn't on there before they're saying. So it had to have happened on that night. But could it have when he hit o she hit O'Keefe's car? See, she hit O'Keefe's car over here. Over here. This okay. has already been done. That's what I'm saying. Rust oh, doesn't I get it. instantly happen. Mm -hmm. It takes time. Hmm. It takes time for rust to set in. Hmm. Okay. It's like a layer of padding, and the speed is no more than tossing a softball 12 feet into the air and letting it hit. I'm just going to pause it. But look at the math. 
I don't math. Velocity. Uh, Squared. Uh, square roots. Feet per second. Miles yeah. Per yeah. We don't. I don't like math. Well, this is. But can this, you back this up out. a little bit? I can. So I can hear what she's that, saying. That's what he said. Back it up now. Oh. Oh. Padding and the speed is no more than tossing a softball twelve feet into the air and letting it hit the ground. Lastly, this is presumed to have happened at 12.40 a.m. At this time, Jennifer McCabe was diligent in seeing John O'Keefe, standing mm -hmm. at the front door and watching for him. Even seeing him, she texts him to park behind her. Another key element right there. Did she say that Jen yes. McCabe? Jen McCabe said that she was that's, at oh, the Oh, that's right. And she saw the car. Him telling him where to park their car. So then why wouldn't she wait at the door for him? Normal that people would. It. She's saying that she saw him get out of the car. They were there. She was texting him where to park. She would be standing there the whole time mm -hmm. waiting for him to come in. Because you yeah. watch your, you watch them. When you're at the door, you, you wait for him to get out the car. You may even walk outside. Yeah. It's just know. So you would be the eyewitness if Karen Reed just backed that shit up and just fucking wailed. So it, yeah, yeah. All right, we got. Go ahead, talk to me. I got nothing. This uh, I. I got nothing. <laughs> All right. All right, Trooper Paul. Uh, your I have a hard time understanding. This is Trooper, Trooper Joe Paul. Paul. He is the expert witness for the prosecution, and with Straight all his data again. points, we're going to show you his point of view on how this happened. Starting from this viewpoint in real time, Karen backs up hitting John and continues all the way to the edge of the driveway. Trooper Paul's opinion is that John has been sidesided by the SUV, pushing mm -hmm. him to the ground, hitting his head on the concrete, and causing him to be knocked unconscious. The trooper does little to explain how John's body was actually found 10 feet in the yard with his phone under him, other than that to say it's just how it happened. <laughs> Zooming out and starting at the beginning, I added these blue marks to indicate each half second according to the expert's testimony. Man, One of the things good. to take notice with this new data is how far Karen drove in reverse. Before Karen was reversing, she was driving away from John at 11 miles per hour according to this expert. So let's start at that point. Okay. John watches Karen drive away. He watches her come to a stop, pause for two and a half seconds, and then start to reverse towards him. This moment of impact is going to create a lot of noise. Picture taking a bat and breaking out the rear taillight, or taking a glass and throwing it into the back of a vehicle, having it shatter. The amount of noise created by this would certainly be heard by those inside the house. I don't know about that. All this data is. Yeah, I don't agree with the. I whole, don't agree with that. Uh, it being heard. Hear. Because if you're having a party, man, and they're all drunk, you know, it's, and j they're from Boston. They're loud, bro. Yeah. Uh, in a party, you got music going, people are talking. You're not going to hear that. Nah, you're not here. But if you're outside, you might hear it. Yeah. But. Like I said, those are the only renderings she's put up so far because, you know, 3D rendering is, it takes a while to get animation. And I mean, she's you saw the, doing math. The weird hand. But at least she put up his, his, what he had up there. You know, it's interesting. Velocity versus speed versus mass and, and, and she square said, roots. What it calculated from what Trooper Paul calculated is like throwing a softball up in the air 12 feet and letting it hit the ground. That's uh, you've heard the saying, "Pictures worth a thousand words," mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. uh, video evidence. I'm a visual type person. Like I, you want to, you can talk to me to death, and it will run through my head. But you put up some 3D renderings like this, and you're like, Done. "Wait a second Done. here!" Like now, I can see where the focus is, where you're like see different angles. Like, and I told you earlier about these 3D renders, you're like, I don't want to know anything about it. And I told you I'd show you at the end, but you see how imperative it's like, I agree yeah. with you, the defense could have used this and just blown the case out of the water. And it could be also that 
you know, at the time you saw the dates, how long it took her to get these renderings. Right. So they might be able to show it now, but she's got another but then one. Again, she to come might out. be doing, she might be also doing 3d renderings on other things. She's trying well, to get started is. as a 3d effects uh, production company. So hopefully, you know, especially based off of this, I, again, I want to encourage uh, people to go to as get industries because these are amazing 3d renderings. And she had more. I just can't seem to find them. Like for some reason they're like, well, you're off. fucking slacking. Well, I think she took them off to fix them, to rebuild them again, because like the Murdoch trials was on there. Uh, the submarines on there, the Nashville's on there, and then the Apple mm -hmm. one is on there, and not Apple as in like iPhone. Apple, Apple. River stabbing. Yeah, I we covered that, that case as well, so that's so. that's on our channel. So but I simple, appreciate this. Quick to the point. Yep, uh, it is what it is. Again, like and subscribe. We love you guys. Uh, we do. Please drop comments. Let us know. Like, hey, yeah. Reach we're out new. to us. Like we're starting out on the well, we're new on this channel. On this, Tommy, yeah. Tommy and we I have our own. Yeah. We have a season show, but a totally different other field. So other uh, genre. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy, but we'll get there later. Mm -hmm. Until then, um, like and subscribe, and uh, we really appreciate you guys. And until next time, spoke at you later. Peace.